Hello everyone and welcome to the Processing JSON and Command Line with JQ video. A couple of weeks ago I recorded a video that showed you by contrast to the grab command why you should consider using JQ instead. This video is continuation of that subject and it actually starts a new series where we will learn how to use JQ to solve some practical and real life problems. I want to keep this and upcoming videos short, example driven and without much theory. And here's what we are going to learn today. We start by calling Remote Search API. In this case, I use openlibrary.org, which allows us to perform a full text search on a public API. The JSON document we get in the response contains a number of documents. Each document is described by a number of fields, and usually we are not interested in all of them. In the second step, we are going to transform the input JSON into a list of objects containing only a few fields. Having that, we can sort and limit the list to contain only three documents. And finally, we can apply the group by function to find out how many publications belong to each author. So in short, this is our plan for today's episode. Here's my terminal window and let's start with calling curl to openlibrary.org. We will use search JSON API with a query and here I will use my last name as a search phrase, just out of curiosity. And let's see how many publications we can find. We have 44 documents where Stempniak occurs in one context or another. And we can see that there is a docs field, which is a list of all documents. And every document is described by a number of fields and we are not interested in all of them. So maybe let's start with uh, some transformation. But before we do that, let's download this output to open library file, open library JSON file. And now we can use this file as the input for JQ. So the simplest example is just to use the identity with JQ and you can see that it prints the JSON in a pretty format here. Okay. Let's apply some more useful transformation. You remember there is this docs field in open library JSON, and here's how we can access it, but we are interested in iterating over this field because now if I call it, you can see that it returns a list, but if I add square brackets here, I actually get an access to every document in this list. So we can use it to run some transformations. For instance, if I want to extract only a title, I can just pass title. And here I get the documents that contain only a title. Now let's add more like a author name and a publish year. And now we have all these information as well. However, as you can see here, author name and publish year is stored in an array. And if we want to extract to a scalar value, we need to do something like this. So now I will access the author name field and I take the first value. The same thing happens here. So create publish here key by accessing publish here and get the zero value. And now we have author name and publish year represented as a scalar value. There are some nulls, like there are some authors that are not defined. Probably there is also publish here that is not defined. So let's just filter out these uh, objects from our output. For that, we can use select function and select function uses some predicate. In our case, we can define it in the following way. Publish here has to be not null and author name also has to be not null. And now we get all documents that contain title, author name, and uh, publish year. Now let's say we want to sort this output by publish year. We could add sort by function with publish year. Uh, but unfortunately it fails. Uh, why? Sort by accepts an array as an input. And here what you can see, our previous transformations, they create the JSON objects just listed one by another. This is not a list, this is just a document containing multiple JSON documents. 
uh, we can fix that. We can wrap this transformation here. So iteration, transformation, then filter. We can wrap it with square brackets. If we put square brackets, what it does is it instructs JQ to take all objects and put it into an array. And now, as you can see, we get a proper JSON array. And now we can add sort by publish year, and the list is sorted as expected. By default, it sorts lists in the ascending order, but we can simply reverse it if we expect the descending order. Now let's say we want to limit how many elements this list contain. If we call length function here, we can see that it contains 35 elements at the moment. If I want to limit the number to, let's say, free, I can call a limit function with number free. And here I need to define an expression. And the correct expression for a JSON array is just to iterate over elements and just take three of them. So now you can see we have three the most recent publications. However, as you can see, the limit function created an output constructed from three separate JSON documents. So if we want to represent it as an array, we need to construct a JSON array by wrapping limit function execution with those square brackets. And now we have the output represented as a proper JSON array. That was an example of transforming input JSON into desired format, sorting by specific field and selecting the first three elements. Now let's take a look how we can use group by to calculate how many publications were created by specific author. Let's get back to this query and let's replace sort by with group by author name. What we get in response is an, an array that contains arrays where every element is associated with the same author. Okay, this format is not very useful, so we will need to transform it a little bit. Let's start with iterating over every array. And here we can apply transformation that gets the outer name extracted from the first element field outer name. Okay, this way we just extracted outer names from those nested arrays. And now we need to think about how we can count how many publications every author produced. Let's take a look what the identity object is. So now if I assign the identity object to the count, I will just assign a list of every publication of a given author. This is useful information because instead of applying the identity, we can just pipe it with the length function. And that way we can calculate how many publications every author has. To produce an array, we will need to wrap this part with square brackets. So now we have a list of objects. And if we want to sort by count, we can do exactly that. We can do it in reverse order. And let's say we want to produce only top three authors as an output. And here we have a final result, which is a list of top three authors by the number of publications. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, watch the next video from my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Go to the description for more information, including my blog post, which is a transcription of this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.